Well, I've got a bureau because I thought it would be kind of nice to have somewhere to store all my stationery. But it's a bit tatty, <laughs> so I think I'm going to paint it. I don't think I'm going to paint it, I know I'm going to paint it. So welcome to Moggy Boxcraft. I'm Debra. Let's upcycle this bureau. I'm also too lazy to sand it. So I'm going to remove the hardware and give it a first coat of paint or a primer with chalk paint. I've got two different types of chalk paint, both by Rustalum. I've got a green colour that's called Bramwell and I've got a browny kind of colour. Is that brown? A brown stone grey colour. I don't know how to describe this. In coca. Pretty much using these because it's the ones I had in the cupboard and I thought I might as well use them up. They'll be excellent for primer. I've also got a few brushes. These two are Annie Stallone. This one I think I just got from B&Q. This Annie Stallone flat number 30 is going to be great for later on in the project or for the little more fiddly bits. But for the first coat I think I'm just going to use these big brushes. So I've got the Annie Stallone oval bristle medium brush. Well it's kind of an oval shape. Quite densely packed bristles. And then I've got this square looking brush. I don't really remember why I got this. It just seemed like a good idea at the time. I think this one might be quite nice for applying. The top half I'll do green, the bottom half I'll do with a brown colour. And then we'll see where life takes us. And I'll probably take the drawers out because I think that'll make life a little bit easier for me. I think I'll start by taking off these handles and the hardware. We'll put that together. I don't lose it in case I reuse them later. I know you're seeing a preview of what the desk kind of looks like now. It's still not finished. However, I thought I'd jump in here and just let you know I much preferred painting with a square brush over this old oval brush. It's a really nice brush, but I just think you can really see the paint brush strokes. <laughs> Does that make sense? Whereas when I was using this one, this cheap ass one from B&Q, it just went on so much nicer. If you're in a quandary as to which brush to use, I recommend this nice square one. So the bureau has had one coat of the chalk paint and that's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just move straight on to doing the gloss paint now. So I'm going to use a whole heap of different gloss paints, mix them together so I get a gradient type effect, a sort of ombre effect fading down. So I'm gonna start with a sort of mint green I think, into a turquoise, into a blue, into a darker blue-ish. I've got pure brilliant white, it's Dulux once gloss. We've got a green called Buckingham, it's Dulux again. And then a blue called Oxford Blue. It's a dark blue. That's Dulux as well. We've got a grey called Seclusion. It's by Santex. And then a black, also by Santex. I've also got a mixing container. Well, I've got a Tupperware container to mix them in. And an old brush. So that seems like the plan, I think. I'm going to start by adding white and green to this bowl. And then work my way down the cabinet, adding more paint to the container. I mixed all the colours in these Tupperware boxes. I know they're not real Tupperware, but is that not what everyone calls these? Look, it's just going to be a Tupperware to me forever. <laughs> I'm going to mix all my colours up in the same dish. But before I add more to this container, I'm going to decant some of the paint or that colour into separate dishes. So that way I have spare colour for the second coat. Forward planning and so I don't have to mix more paint. So for the second colour I used on the bureau, this kind of light turquoisey green colour, I added a good dollop of blue and another little splash of green. For the third colour, this mid blue, I just added a splash more blue to the mix. And for the fourth colour, this, well, I suppose this is a mid blue, isn't it? That's more like a light blue. Oh, well, this slightly darker mid blue. I just added a bit more blue to the mix and a splash more green. Mm -hmm. 
And for the last colour, this sort of smoky muted dark blue at the bottom of the bureau, I just made that by adding some grey, some blue and a splash of black. As you can see by this coat of paint, I haven't tried to blend this in. I have just brushed it on and kind of slightly... I've not really blended it at all, have I? I'm not doing it straight across, I have used brush strokes just to blend it into each other... badly. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good description or not, but that's what I've done. <laughs> because this is gloss paint, I left it about 24 to 48 hours completely cure or dry. Because now it is time to paint inside the drawers. I decided to paint the inside, the drawers and the bureau inside a contrast in colour. Pink, because it's one of my favourite colours, if you hadn't already guessed. And I think it just contrasts really nicely with the blues and the greens. And in case you didn't know, it's pretty tricky to find pink gloss paint that's actually hard wearing. I have looked, I have tried, it's usually terrible. So I just make my own now. <laughs> also it saves money because I already have a red gloss paint and a white gloss paint. I can make the exact colour I want, just about. I would prefer if it was slightly more neon, but that's just me. The red I've got is Pillar Box Red and it's an exterior paint by Santex so it shall be rather hard wearing. I'm going to mix it with a white exterior paint that I used earlier. And I'll just keep adding a little bit of white, giving it a good mix, adding some more white until I get to the shade of pink that I want. I then painted the inside of all of the drawers. So when you open the drawers, you'll get a pop of colour. I love that. It's so fun. Who doesn't like a pink interior? Fun, isn't it? Although I only did one coat on the drawers because I discovered any more and they're going to stick quite badly. I also painted in here. Obviously when painting this, I was very careful around all the bits of hardware, the hinges, all that. So it was neat and tidy because I'm lazy. I didn't bother doing a second coat at the back you're not going to see that when it's filled with said stationery. That seemed like a waste of time and a waste of paint. So I did a second coat on this surfaces here, on the outside of it there. This definitely did a second coat. It was looking a little bit patchy. I probably should have done an undercoat. I should definitely have done an undercoat, but I was lazy. and <laughs> I couldn't be bothered. I just wanted to get the paint on. It's too late now. I've done it. And I love that when you close it up, you don't see the pink, apart from these little runs here, but I'm going to fix that in a minute. I have sanded that back a tiny bit. We'll get onto that in a second. <laughs> and like I said, I didn't do a second coat on the drawers because I just thought they were starting to stick when I opened them. The edges have dragged slightly and rubbed the paint, but that's fine. I could have done a second coat in here, but the drawers are going to be filled with stuff. So they're not going to really see it. So again, laziness prevailed. So after leaving it to dry for a good few days, maybe a couple of weeks, I was going to reattach the old handles. However, I was in the range and came across these crystal handles. <laughs> I love called. Crystal furniture knobs. Love a crystal handle. I would love it if they were in gold, but alas, I cannot find them in gold. They were only in this silvery, clear crystal colour. Attach them rather than this old handles. Um, is it better or, or would they... No, I really like the crystal handles. Who doesn't like a bit of bling? However, that does throw my plan of adding gold to this out the window, which may be a good thing because I like to add gold to everything. So maybe it's good to branch out by not adding gold to a piece of furniture. So now it's time for the final coat of paint. And I've been debating how I'm going to do this for some time. I couldn't decide if I should use just brush strokes or if I should blend it and sponge it. And I've been thinking about this now for about two months. And I would really like to get it finished, put the stationery back in here so I could be nice and organised again. Because this room is a bit of a tip. So I've decided I'm going to sponge it because I think that's the easiest thing to do. Hopefully. So I've got all my supplies to do this. I've got my tubs of paint that I used for the first coat. 
They have been sitting here for nearly two months. They are not airtight. <laughs> They're quite dry. You can see they're squishy. So I'm really hoping I can peel back this layer of dried paint on top. And I'm really hoping there's going to be enough paint underneath this that I can add a little bit of white spirit to and dab on. And they're all like this. <laughs> Why did I leave it so long? I've got gloves, which I'm definitely going to need. Sea sponge. It's been used for painting quite a few times in the past. I'm just going to chop a bit off it. I think it's covered with dog hair. I'm sure that will just add to the texture. Got some white spirit to try and soften these paints up a bit underneath. Or just make it a bit more dabbable. That's not a word. That's okay. Heap of paint brushes because I need to touch up this little section in here. I've also got some old chopsticks to try and help me peel. This could be a disaster. <laughs> I think this dry layer of paint is. Oh, that's so bad. <laughs> Thick. That layer of paint is. Definitely got some usable paint. Look at that. That's definitely still usable. Chop off a good bit of sponge. <laughs> it's such a horrible sponge. Try to pick off as much hair as possible. Probably easier to pick the hairs off the sponge than it is going to be off the paint. Gonna add a tiny bit of white spirit into this colour. How if I do this and it goes wrong? How bad can it be? Sure, it'll just water it down a little bit, won't it? Yeah, perfect, super. We're just gonna go for it. Is this going to be the plan? <laughs> Apparently so. Just going to just gonna start at the top with lightest colour and work my way down. So I really should open this up. Try and do the insides here as well. Right. Oh my god, there's just little dog fluff hairs all over it. I'm going to carry on dabbing until I'm happy, I think. Time to do the next section. Oh, look at it. Oh wow. That's a thick layer of paint, is it not? Again, add a tiny bit of white spirit. Just a splash. It just helps to thin the paint out a little bit. Before I do this, I think I'm going to have to take these handles off because I don't want to get paint on the handles. That would be a disaster, wouldn't it? Also going to use a tiny paintbrush to touch up all this in here. How I'm going to do this, I reckon just jam a chopstick in there so it doesn't completely close so I can touch up all these areas so that the pink is kind of seep through from this crack. Try and be as accurate as possible. Now I'm just going to do the same thing again as I did with the top. Dip the sponge in, dab, dab, dab. Hopefully start blending it all together. <gasps> Don't drop it, drop it, drop it in the drawer. Ah! Oops, close. Do that around the sides. I'm going to dab all over each area, so that way if the colours have changed slightly, it's not going to be so noticeable. I think by now we get the gist. Peel off that paint skin. There's quite a lot of paint skin here. Add a little bit of white spirit to try and thin out the paint in the hopes that it is still vaguely the same colour as the first coat. And then dip and dab. And then lots of dabbing where the two colours meet. I'm doing that bit first to try and get the paint to just mingle a little bit better. And then working my way down with a more neat colour, trying to lightly dab. And remember to do the sides. Right, so I've done down past the handles. I'm going to pop them back on so I can close the drawer and make sure everything looks right and lines up properly. I'm not going to close the drawer fully. Oh, I'm just going to throw the handles away and get paint on them. Apparently. I'm going to have to close this drawer, aren't I? Come watch me! Well, it 
that's what it is. Now to continue the endeavours. Take these handles off of it as well. A ridiculous waste of paint. On to the next colour. Put those handles back on. These handles are never going to come off of it again. Last set of handles to deal with. On to the last colour, hurrah! Oh, don't fall back in there, no! God, what a state. I'm just throwing that everywhere. Uh oh! If I spill any paint, I do try to clean it up as quickly as possible. Because if not, it's quite difficult to get it off. Let's get this bureau finished! I did think about changing sponges. Do you know what I quite like? The little lighter flakes of flecks of paint running through it. Get the handles back on. It is very my style. I do like a sponge technique. I am just glad to be getting this finished. So it's been a long time coming. I'm going to continue dabbing until I'm happy with how it looks. And although this bit is going to take me some more time, and it's going to take a few days to dry. At least you don't have to wait to see the finished results. Here they are. If you've enjoyed this video, leave a like, leave a comment, share and subscribe. Of course, subscribing is optional, but it is very much appreciated. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Another painting endeavor and journey complete. <laughs>